I think what's been really interesting is the political realignment on trade. You would expect a Democrat to say go hard. The, the real surprise here is that you have a Republican president who is a trade disruptor who has done what he's done on trade. And so um, I don't agree with Chuck Schumer. I think he made the wrong statement, sent the wrong signal. Meaning? But I, well, I, I mean, I think right now what we need to do is pull back engage our, our trading allies, engage our, uh, you know, our d consistent partners, and try and put more pressure on China, not by imposing tariffs resulting in increased cost to consumers, devastation to people in my state in agriculture, but taking a look at how we can leverage the support that we have from the rest of the free world to okay. control Chinese so behavior. So a UN type of, of, of movement. Uh, Patrick, the, the, Senator here referenced the damage uh, to consumers and to businesses. Polaris yesterday told us um, some pretty alarming things. They said if these tariffs do go up to 25 percent on Friday, they'll lose a third of their net income. Uh, they just can't relocate out of China as quickly as they would need to. I mean, this is coming now if it happens on Friday very suddenly and with very little time for businesses to respond. I think for a while markets have believed that a trade deal of some kind, whether it was satisfactory or not, uh, in terms of solving the underlying issues, was in the cards. And, you know, on Sunday, the tweet that the president had kind of surprised everyone. And, uh, and I think that, the, you know, businesses have been concerned for quite a while about the impact that tariffs really could have, especially broader tariffs and larger tariffs that the president's talking about. You know, but... but a lot of the drama that we're seeing, you know, this is how negotiations play out. Normally, we don't see it play out on Twitter. It's not broadcast on Twitter. But there are moments of impasse. And both, both countries are coming to the table feeling like they have the upper hand. The Chinese feel like they have stabilized their economy. That's why they're trying to maybe claw back on some of the things that the U.S. believed that they agreed to before. Uh, the U.S., the Trump administration is looking at 3.2 percent GDP growth and right. saying, well, the U.S. is going to be impervious to the damage from tariffs. I don't agree with that. I think that the U.S. is actually quite vulnerable. Uh, the U.S. economy is more vulnerable than that headline number would suggest. Senator, we had an expert from AEI on earlier this week, Derek Scissors, who said he doesn't like tariffs as a tool either because of the, the collateral damage. He said, why not sanctions? Why not even export controls, which would constrain U.S. businesses from even doing business in China. But in a way, they're stuck in a dilemma where they want the business. And so individually, they all want to jump in, even though collectively that gives over some of these sensitive technologies. How do you think American businesses are positioned as, as they watch this all play out? I, I think, number one, they're confused because it's on again, off again. Um, I think it's all been baked into the markets for a long time, and now this disruption, you're seeing some up and downs. But this is going to continue and it's going to go on. The question that we have to ask in terms of long term is, is tariffs the right strategy? And I have to agree. Look at sanctions. Look at other kinds of retaliation that we can impose that doesn't have the impact of a 17th century tool that we can actually engage and have a better result and a better outcome in terms of putting pressure on China. If it's true, Patrick, go ahead. What I, are you going to say? I, I, think, I think the senator is right here in the sense that the United States is not actually playing its strongest card. Um, and the card that it's playing is tariffs that actually do a lot of harm to the U.S. economy. Uh, the U.S., I think, should step back, um, look at a broader, look at, look at rallying trading partners like Europe, like Japan, uh, like even India, that have big problems with uh, the way the Chinese have behaved. Um, but that would take priorities, setting priorities. And instead, we've been that... going around picking, picking battles with everybody um, instead of uh, organizing a coalition to right. put sustained pressure on China over the long term from, from multiple sources instead of just one that, that they can retaliate. <laughs>